Hey, aloha everyone. My name is Naiva Flory and I'm coming to you from the beautiful island of Kauai and I'm super excited for our presentation today. So if you don't see the friends that you'd invited on, please make sure and send them a quick reminder. We're going to go over some of our weekly housekeeping and um, so I'd love to bring on Taz, one of our amazing Million Mom Movement Council members and she's going to share more about the pledge with us as well as our scholarship opportunity. Thank you so much, Naeva. Okay, so the pledge is something that I love. Okay, so, you know, we are about talking about toxicity in our food. And what's the best way to do it than sharing our pledge? Okay, I'll read it now. But this pledge you can share with others. We have it on the Purium app. No, we don't have it yet on the Purium app. We have it on the millionmommovement.info. And you go to join and you scroll down and there it is. And I like taking this pledge and saving it and sharing it with others. And I share it with others, other moms and caregivers. And I ask them, does this resonate with you? Okay, so I'm going to read it now. The pledge. I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels, educate myself, and on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I understand that my I am committed to sharing the movement of many. I am the million mom movement. So when we say that, we are the movement of many. So that is M-O-M. -M. So this is for caregivers, dads, dads, I'm looking at you, right? Aunties and uncles, this is for everyone. So I share this pledge and I ask, does this resonate with you? Are you looking for clean living? Well, you know what? We have something called Fierce Friday that we get together and we talk about this. Should I go into the scholarship right away? Yeah, or should I go ahead and roll right into the scholarship? Okay, so we have an incredible opportunity that Purium offers called the scholarship. And you know what we've noticed? That so many people are coming up to us saying, you know, we just can't afford it. And it's a, it's a cycle, right? How many people, they're like, McDonald's is not organic. They can't afford it. So we've given them a solution. And the solution is through the scholarship. So we have the scholarship that we offer three months of superfoods. We give you the superfood for three months. And along with that, the business, you get the business and you get to build this empire for yourself and for your future generation. And how do you do that? Okay, so millionmommovement.info slash scholarship. Go to this page and fill it out. Get back to the person who invited you to this call and fill it out and we will assess it, okay? So we have it already done of what packs you will get for the next three months and you need to start sharing. You start sharing the business forward. And you know what? Being public is the perfect way to start. I get this all the time that people are like, well, where do we start? You have to start being public and putting it out there because the more we share our passion of clean living with each and every person, this is how we are being rewarded at the same time. Okay, back to you, Naeva. Oh, wait, it, this is open for everyone in North America, Canada, and the United States. And if you're already a Purium brand partner, you are not legible, okay? So this is for all customers and anyone who's new. Back awesome. to you, Naeva. Thank you so much, Taz. That was beautiful. And yes, we come back here every week on Fierce Friday to share with you a different topic. And we always like to share with you our pledge our petition and our scholarship opportunity. I would love to share with you all about our incredible petition that we started a couple years ago. It's a petition to help remove glyphosate from the most popular snacks that children eat from General Mills. And we found that most of us either have eaten Cheerios or given Cheerios to our children. And it's something that if we don't know, then we just don't know what we don't know. That's why we're here to educate and share. And so, Cheerios have the highest part per billion in them of this toxic chemical glyphosate, which is sprayed on a lot of our food. And we may not know this, but in our petition, we have a really great um, 
link that can teach you more about this issue. And today we're going to learn a lot more about this issue as well. But we love to invite you to go to this petition, sign it yourself, and then share it with those you love. Share them in your community with the people that care about their food sources. And let's get that petition filled so that we can turn it into General Mills and show them that we really do care about the ingredients that are in our food. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that we have some social media pages that I love to share with you. I'm going to go straight to our Instagram page first, because that is where you'll find the links to everything we've talked about so far today. You'll find the link to the petition so that you can sign it. You can find the link to our Million Mom Movement page where the, the pledge is. You'll find the link to our scholarships right there in the links in our bio on Instagram. So if ever you're looking for the links, go to our Instagram page and look there first because everything is linked in our link in our bio. The second thing I'd like to share about our Instagram is it's a really fun way that I get to promote you in our community. So if you don't know, I have been in charge of the social media for the Million Mom Movement for nearly two years now, and it has been a huge pleasure of mine to get to read what you guys post, repost your stories, repost your posts, and just promote you in our community. So please use our hashtags. We have hashtag Million Mom Movement, hashtag I am the Million Mom Movement, and hashtag we are the Million Mom Movement. And depending on what you're sharing, we would love to invite you to use one or all three Three of those hashtags so that I can better find you. We also have a Facebook page where everything on Instagram gets posted to, to Facebook and Twitter as well. And then on Facebook, we also have a group called Million Mom Movement Official. And this group is a really great place that you can go join, invite your team members and friends to come learn more, share your story in there. If you're wanting to go live, but you're a little bit shy, it's a great safe space to go live. You're gonna get a ton of encouragement from the community. So I just wanna invite you to join all of our platforms so you can stay up to date with what's happening, okay? Hi, and I'm super excited today for our amazing presentation. We have some great presenters today. Um, and our the, the presenter today is one of our dear council members, Carmela Velarde, and she's a holistic health counselor. She's a licensed massage therapist, a certified Reiki, certified in Reiki, sorry, Kundalini yoga, and a doctorate for acupuncture and herbology. She's super knowledgeable, and she's going to share a lot with us today. She's also previously owned a yoga studio and wellness center in New York City and has partnered with Purium for about seven years now. So I'm so excited to hear more from you, Carmela, and your guests today. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Naeva. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I'm excited today to be hosting this topic on gut health. Um, like Naeva had said, my background is um, in holistic health. I've been a practitioner for over 20 years and I've owned a wellness center. So I've been working with the body. Um, I actually had started with a psychology and women's studies degree, which is why I'm so passionate about the, the Million Mom Movement is um, really helping women and moms. And, um, and really today, what I'm excited about is the human microbiome. This discussion is very dear to my heart. It's been my healing path since I was a child. Um, and most of us kind of understand it, kind of are putting together the pieces of what our own human microbiome might um, be all about and there's also it's very trending right now in the wellness industry so i'm here to clarify and and bring light to what this topic is so i'm really excited now what is it so it's actually a collection of it's a massive collection of bacteria fungi viruses protozoa that exist in and outside of our bodies now a lot of us understand that there is an access, a gut brain access, where in the gut actually um, covers not just the brain and digestion, but also hormones and immune health. So it's vast, it's vast, and it actually has over 100 trillion microscopic bacteria that are living within inside it, with inside us and on us. Now, it's very interesting to, to just like have this concept because one to 2% of our body mass actually exists as bacteria in our body, one to 2%. And that means that almost one to two pounds of our body weight 
is bacteria. Now, understanding how we interact with it, how we use this to balance our life, to really receive all the goodness of all this superfood nutrition that we are taking in, is to understand the gut. And the gut is really all about the colon health. Um, and it, it starts in the large intestine, but it doesn't actually start there. It starts in the mouth. It's 30 feet from the mouth to the anus. That is the microbiome. And that's why it's so vast because there's so many more neural synapses that are in the microbiome than in our brain. So only since 2006 have scientists it's truly been digging deep and having empirical evidence about what is what exists inside us only since 2006 guys and this is this is mind blowing to me mind blowing because if we have not up until this time in our humanity understood one of the most one of the most interactive integrative um, organs in our system that includes the endocrine system, the digestive system, the cardiovascular system, the neuro neurology system. I mean, we need to understand this more, which is why I'm so excited to talk to you about it today. So now let's talk about what does the gut do? So the gut receives di digested foods from our stomach. So why is this such an important topic? While we are a community of superfood nutrition cleansers because detoxification has been on the mind and on the forefront of why maybe we said yes to starting a program. Now, how do these microbes use nutrients? Well, they digest it from the stomach and it grows. These microbes grow with nutrients. So yes, it matters the quality of nutrients you put into your, your microbiome. Absolutely, because there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. But then what happens next is these microbes produce metabolites, chemicals, and these chemicals signal the production of aminos, vitamins, fatty chain acids, neurochemicals. And after that, we receive these metabolites. And what do we do? We use them as energy. And they're signals for our body and our brain to react to the world. So that's just a simple way to break down how the gut relates to the signal functions of our hormones. It's actually the control center. So this feedback loop that we're experiencing every single day, whenever we put something in our mouths, the enzymes are produced, right? And it also matters the quality of how we chew, right? The quality of how we chew our food. So chewing slowly, taking time to calm down while we eat, so many of us, and I, do, I know that there's a statistic in our lifestyle guide that says that there's a certain percentage of Americans that eat our food in a car. And it's like, while we're on the phone, while we're driving, while we're uh, taking care of the kids, there's way too much happening when we're eating. And this is the time when we need to focus on our microbiome. Just as soon as we put something into our mouths, because lifestyle changes everything. Lifestyle changes the composition of our microbiome. So let's talk about this a little bit, guys, because how and what are the things that we can focus on to enhance the optimization of our microbiome? And I'll just lay it out in the beginning is that when I was a child and I was growing up, going back and forth to my home country in the Philippines, they loved to feed me desserts, sugar. Sugar was my thing. Oh my gosh, breads, sugars. And going and, and being a guest, it's really all about, I'm sorry, somebody's calling me. It's really about the quality of what you are taking in. The guest that I'm bringing on is calling me, but from the wrong device, excuse me. So yes, how I started out my building my microbiome actually was impeded by a lot of dietary factors, which is why I have to really focus on this because I had suffered with it my whole life. And not until only recently was the term leaky gut, something that had come on to the wellness field. And people were talking about it because, well, in with Perium in 2018, David Sandoval created a formula called Biomedic. And this is really important to discuss. And it's because it's a probiotic but it's also a prebiotic. And a lot of you might be even thinking, what is the difference between pro and prebiotic? And should I be taking one or should I be taking both? Well, the biomedic is actually both. 
So you're doing well by taking one, the biomedic, because a prebiotic is actually various fibers that feed beneficial bacteria, while the probiotic are help, helping you to build positive beneficial bacteria. So the biomedic through the chicory root fiber, the digestive wheat germ, the prebiosure is actually a pre and probiotic. And then the humic and fulvic acid helps to feed vital minerals to the probiotic. So it's a really power packed pre and probiotic guys, just so you know, I know many of you are already taking it. So this is um, something along the line of what also changes the composition of our microbiome? Well, antibiotics. So we are a culture of sharing how um, we're probiotic, not antibiotic as much as possible. So antibiotics, what do they do? They are necessary to fight infection if it's so far down the line, right? If it's so far down the line where it's not preventative anymore and you're actually fighting a true infection, what can we do? I'm sorry. And what can we do is we can prevent by taking beneficial probiotics through food. So I'm not saying that antibiotics are off limits 100%, but it does take the body a number of weeks, maybe even a week or a week and a half to build up and rebond the, the gut villi. So just know that by uptaking the amount of probiotic and prebiotics is so crucial when you're taking antibiotics. The other thing is diet, okay, diet. So in the Western diet, we all know that it's high sugar, high fat, low fiber, right? And we know also that it will decrease the diverse microbes that can be produced because it doesn't feed the good bacteria. It actually decreases the amount, in which case it doesn't help you to digest, in which case it increases inflammation and um, lack of metabolism, which increases weight. Now, if we move to the standard away from the standard American diet to say a Mediterranean diet, which is high in, high in fruits, vegetables, nuts, proteins, um, and fish, it actually has been proven to increase mental health. And that's the neurodigestive connection. Because if you're eating high um, beneficial fats, then you're benefiting the microbes to then feed into the neuron synapses. And that's the gut brain connection. That diet is beneficial. It's actually what's in our lifestyle guide. So whenever we, we look at what do we have as a pure and lifestyle, it's definitely connected to the lifestyle guide. Just the, the wild caught fish, if you do eat meat. Um, now let's then talk about exercise. How does exercise benefit the microbiome? Well, movement actually has been proven to have, okay, people who have very active lifestyles versus sedentary lifestyles. It has been proven that the active lifestylers, um, they produce a much more di diverse and vast number of microbiome, micro microbes, microorganisms that help to break down the food and absorb the food. And it also decreases cellular inflammation and increases the metabolites that help you to increase cardiovascular health. So the gut heart connection is very, very important guys. So getting into movement wherein you're actually massaging your large intestine. Think about how large your colon is. If you're not doing, and I'm a massage therapist, so I really believe in also abdominal massage because this mic, this very vast, I mean, there's 30 feet of colon, right? That you're going to have to focus on the health of. And when you're exercising, what are you doing? You're, you're massaging your internal organs. And this has a huge difference if you are an active versus sedentary lifestyler with your microbiome. Um, so there's another aspect that we had just touched on, which is bi-directional neurohumoral communication. What is that? It's the gut-brain axis. And basically it means that, wow, our microbiomes control our hormones. And how does that happen? Well, these, the systems that direct these um, metabolites, these chemicals to signal what our body is supposed to do and when, and if it's not communicating well, it's because there's not enough positive benefit synapses happening. 
And those microorganisms, the beneficial ones, are helping your body smooth move into those synapses. So what happens when they are not, um, when there's not a balance? You have central nervous system disorders such as autism, ADHD, ADD. You have um, autoimmune issues like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, you have type one and type two diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, when I first heard about leaky gut, when Purium had launched their biomedic, I, there was a huge list of disorders that were connected to leaky gut. And guys, this is why everybody needs to understand gut health and what they can do daily to prevent it and to optimize it. So I have a wonderful guest and I really hope she was able to log in. If not, I'm gonna have to call her. Her name is Arlene Eretz. Nayeva, do you see her on our board? And if so, can you take her off mute? Let's see. I do not see her. I don't see her either. Do okay. Hang on a moment. She was calling and calling me. <laughs> so um, I am going to, hmm, there's a way to do this. Hang on just a moment, guys. And I'm calling upon this guest specifically because she is my colon hydrotherapist. She and I have had a about one year long relationship with her being my holistic doctor. And she has helped me to reverse so many things from mold toxicity, um, from, which is extremely hard to treat, by the way, um, and candida, um, residual candida. I had been already working well with it. Um, and really just immunological issues that I have been imbalanced with. And it was the one thing I tell you that is a huge connection, which is colon hydrotherapy with our superfood cleansing. I feel, and she feels 100% too, that we need to share this message to you today because without hydrating your colon, the superfood lifestyle isn't as effective. And I want you to hear firsthand from somebody who has had 30 years of life experience, including um, patenting her own table that she herself um, put her son in aut that was autistic into remission. So, um, hang on a moment. She's still trying to call me. She's looking for a meeting ID. Okay. So maybe what I can do is share screen and call her. This is like, guys, I've never done this before. So let's just go for it. Um, are you seeing screen? We are. Okay. Let's see if she will pop on. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Hey. Hi, Arlene. We did it. <laughs> I, 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 so, so, okay, all you had to do is probably call me then, right? This is the way we're doing it. I'm okay. so happy. All right, sorry. I, I'm here. I'm here. So <laughs> where do you want to start? Okay. So guys, I, I just gave you a short introduction about why it's so important for us to connect the dots for this community, this million mom movement community about what colon hydrotherapy is, colon health. And you yourself are such an incredible mother. I am so inspired by you. Um, I would love for you to begin with sharing your story as a mom with your story with Jonathan. And, and let me tell you guys, I met with her for my colon hydrotherapy weekly appointment yesterday with her. And we discussed some of the things that were <laughs> That were, and I feel amazing. Thank you very much. Um, that were just so important for us to share about your story, such as, you know, Jonathan, like just, just start out by sharing that. Okay. Uh, you all know my name, Arlene. We don't hear. Oh, wait, one second. You hear me? You don't hear yes. her? No. 
So Carm, I think when you muted, because is she still on the phone? Yes, can you speak, Carlene? Yes, do you hear me? Okay, yes. Got it. Can you hear me? Thank you. Okay, got it. Okay, so I'm a mom with a son that was diagnosed with autism by the time he was the age of five. And so we've been through everything with therapy, hundreds of thousands of dollars on um, doctors and this diet and that diet. And we're talking 20 some years ago. So there wasn't that much out about, about uh, autism, let alone colon hydrotherapy. I too had issues where I wore a bag for three years because my son was so large. And so with me starting to do colon hydrotherapy, which doctors told me I would not get off that bag. And I did. And um, colon hydrotherapy, when I realized what it did for me, I was like, wait a minute, this is what my son needs. But at the time, he was only six going on seven. And no matter what I did with talking to other colon therapists, they would not, they would not approach uh, doing my son. So I, I had to study about it. So I went to school, took me many years, uh, probably a good six, seven years to get through because I was running a business at the time too, and driving my son to and from school. And we did all the diets. We did the gluten-free, the casein-free. I did the fermentation. I couldn't even give my son a uh, goat kefir, you know, which is goat protein is much smaller. And we were fermented. I couldn't give him any of that. I started out with doing coconut water kefir with him. And we did a little bit at a time. But what ended up happening is as I got well, where mom has to understand you first, because children won't get well too. The mother gets well. They were in our womb for nine months, so they know everything, okay? Even if we don't speak it, they know it. So with that said, I was such, after I got well, my husband started to see how well I got. And more and more, I just thought, we got to do this on him. So I went to school for it. And then I got so involved, I became an instructor. And then I went farther with, uh, we made a device, a colon irrigation device. So with that said, my son, the first time he talked to TACA, which means talk about curing autism in New York, he was Skyping when he was like maybe 12, 13, we had it set up. And he explained to that panel about colon hydrotherapy. And he said, and they all laughed. He said, what did you think when your mom said that you were going to do colon hydrotherapy? He says, I thought she was crazy. And they all start laughing. And then he got real close. He goes, but she wasn't. <laughs> so with that said, he made it very clear to everybody how safe he felt, how the warm water felt good on him. Okay. And how he released that will, you know, he laughed a little bit because he passed gas. I said, that's good. We were cheering him on. Yeah, let go of that. <laughs> and uh, we could, I don't even want to say what came out of him at first. Okay, guys, because uh, we could see that he was loaded with, with worms. We could see it, but we gave him sessions wow. throughout that month. And the school called me, which was a special school for autism, wanted to know what we were doing because Jonathan went up four reading levels in reading in a month. So I knew right there, and even my son was expressed to them, you know what, my first session felt like a light bulb went off of me. Now that was that was an 11-year-old kid, okay, yeah, saying that. So mm -hmm. then more and more I start realizing about how important colon hydrotherapy was because I really didn't understand it all. That's why I went to school. And really what taught me was not only my son, but my clients coming in with all different needs, yeah. all different uh, situations that they were living. And the more and more I did it, the more I could see, wow, there's just so much more to this than meets the eye. And the more, you know how they say the gut feeds the brain, guys? Or when people talk about the microbiome, we are the microbiome. I mean, we, we are more bacteria than anything. And that's good and bad bacteria. Yeah. So we have good and bad bacteria. We have good and bad mucus. We have good and bad yeast. The only thing we have bad is gas. Which what happens? We we uh, a, a beautiful dentist told me that the human body makes seven gases. Okay, so we have to understand gas traps everything. We're all walking, talking tubes from mouth to anus, thirty feet. There's nobody different. And I wanted to talk because Carmela says a lot of people um they don't understand about colon hydrotherapy. They think they're getting rid of their good bacteria. I said, well, that's absolutely the opposite. That's not true. None of that's true. Now, I always ask people, do you think when you're drinking water from your mouth that you're, you're losing good bacteria? Because it's the same way that you're bringing water into your bottom, okay? 
So the good bacteria, I was telling, um, I was telling you uh, that the good bacteria is you open, if you open up the hostrum, it's like a sack and you open it up, like inside is like these grooves, almost like if you look at a mushroom upside down, those tiny little grooves, that's how those, they're called hostrum sacs. You open that up. The outer layer, layer of the inside is called the lumen. Underneath that layer is a sticky layer. And underneath that layer is where the good bacteria is. So actually, when you feed your body water, which how much we drink this way, I don't know how much you're absorbing. Now, Arlene, when you bring, can I stop you ahead. right there? Because we were discussing, sure. I think a lot of people have questions. That's why I want to ask this question is, you know, is too much whole colon hydrotherapy not beneficial? Like, is it stripping away? And that's, I think what you're answering, but then also people who drink, say a gallon of water daily, what is the difference of drinking a gallon of water and then the benefits of colon hydrotherapy on a regular basis? Right. So when you drink a gallon of water a day from the mouth, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, you're absorbing it. Okay. A lot of um, uh, the kids are being born uh, dehydrated now. Okay. Everyone's constipated. And what you have to understand is we didn't have this electromagnetic field that we have 60, 70 years ago. We didn't have this. It is affecting our cells and our body and our bodies made so yes. perfectly. It doesn't, it, it doesn't want that electromagnetic field coming into our cell. So they know right. through testing that the outer layer of the cell has become very hard, like a crust hard. Mm -hmm. So it's not yeah. like it used to be. So now we can't absorb our nutrition and we can't release the toxins like we used to. We have to work on it. But when you bring water through the rectum into the colon, that's the major job of the colon. It absorbs anything you want to get into your body. You bring it in through the rectum, it's going to get in there, okay? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's got millions of veins wrapped all around it, and it feeds every part of your body from your brain, your eyes, your skin, your everything, okay? Yes. And people, people can't believe how great their skin is afterwards, because why? The inside skin, which is mouth to anus, is the true skin. And that shows the outer skin what's going on. So when you do right. colon hydrotherapy, you're hydrating the body, the cells. Your heart beats better because the blood's not as thick. The liver releases better. All your organs and glands are working better because there's not that stress on when you're hydrated. When right. we're dehydrated, that's stress on the body. Yes. I'm full of toxins. Yeah, I, there's so much you could say, continue saying that. You, um, let's break down a little bit. What would an experience of doing colon, like if your first colonic be like for those who have never had your table experience before? Right, right. So listen, this, I'm going to be honest with you. I have lots of people that come in and it's not their first time, but they're scared to death because they experience maybe not such a good thing. And I will be honest with you. There is a lot of, good colon therapists out there, but there's a lot that aren't very good colon therapists, okay? I truly have a passion for it because I see my son get well. So, and I see many children get well and many people get well, okay? So my system, um, it's an open system. There's two systems, there's open and closed. They're both good. It's your choice of what you are comfortable with. A closed system is a spectula, okay? It's about that size. And everything's and the colon therapist uh, assists you to put that in you. Okay, she also has a little a little box that actually you can see the pressure on it, and there's a little bit of a viewing tube like that that you can see what's coming out. She fills you, she closes the valve, the water, she opens the valve to release, and she releases you. So in between those fills and releases, um, the water shut off. My system is, and, and my system basically, because even all the other open systems, they don't have a flow control like our system does. So it allows the client user to be in full control of the gravity warmth fed purified water coming into you. So in other words, you can put a drip into you, a little drip, okay? I mean, you're not gonna fly off the table if you have a full valve open, okay? It's just a more flow open valve. And as you feel the urge to release, you get to release at will. So the client users in full control of the whole session from the time they start to the time they're done, okay? And we feel that when a client is in full control, 
they feel more safe. They feel more safe, the more relaxed, the more they relax, the more they release. And that's what it's all about. So this is like doing 30 enemas. So even when you're pushing out to release with this, there's still water coming into you constantly, unless you shut the valve completely off. And you can do that if you want. It's not going to make anything different. Okay, because what happens when people get uncomfortable, it's gas trapped and the water's going to remove that. So the cone's 30 feet. I mean, the cone's five feet. Okay. It's a lot to absorb, but people have to understand that the body is made perfectly. Even when you clean it, it's still got stuff to dump. So as soon as you clean your colon, all the other organs are like, I want a piece of this action because where are they going to get that from, right? So you start hydrating the body, the body is simulate, it wants to release it. So when you do a colon hydrotherapy session, you're also strengthening that colon. You're exercising it. Isn't that great? You're toning your colon when you're doing that. Isn't that amazing? So just like your heart has a rhythm, the colon has a rhythm. So not only you're hydrating every cell, releasing the toxins, the mucus, the whatever, the the gas, the poop, the poop is easy, okay? Then not only on top of that, the other organs get to release too. And of course, when the colon starts dumping, that's when the other organs want to start dumping in there, okay? Okay. Yeah, I love- It's good stuff. It's good. good. It's so good. Is everyone able to see Arlene now? Can you see her now? Okay. We were getting a feedback about- Thing. Okay, there we Hello go. Hello to all moms. <laughs> and it all starts with the moms. And that's what I want to talk about enemas. Okay. Yeah. Bring enemas back into the house again. Our great great ancestors did them all the time. And everyone's like, mm, 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 I don't, mm. why? We brush our teeth, right? right? Why are we not tending to that part of our body, which is so important? Yes. So important. When we release the toxins out, enemas are beautiful. You're in control of. Filling yourself, releasing yourself. You get a good enema bag, and I got connections for you to get a good enema bag, a beautiful five quart enema bag. You start and you start teaching your children when they're young, and then they yes. don't they don't have because listen, if we don't if we don't feel comfortable with it, do you think our children are going to feel comfortable with it? No, they won't. So our whatever lady, mama feels, the child's going to feel too. So Arlene, let's talk about the question that might be on people's minds, like. Is it safe for children to be doing colonics? And how then um, do we start to incorporate enemas in the home? Okay. Now, listen, a couple of years ago, my practice was mainly children. Okay. I'd have people come all over the world, not just New York and Philly, all over the world because their children were sick. Okay. With, with, um, when everyone, I, I like to call it an unbalance, okay? Because what goes on in the gut, that's what I learned with my son. No matter what I did, it was two steps forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, I was like, what, what's going on here? But when I introduced colon hydrotherapy to him, I realized when he got off the table, his, his, he was calm, he was relaxed. He always, you know, they always say, oh, he has ADHD, he's got OCD, he's got this, you know, it's just all labels, it's just mm, all that. Mm -hmm. And all it is is different bacteria affecting the gut that feeds the brain. And when he got the colon hydrotherapy, he was calm, he felt good, yeah. he, he, he says, mama, everything feels better. It's so true. then I start realizing, okay, guys, this is really important to understand how the microbiome works how the villi and the microvilli and the enzymes in the small intestine is working, how we have to put good bacteria back in. That's the best time to do it when you get colon hydrotherapy or you do enemas because the, the hostums are plump, they're hydrated, the body's plump, the blood's beautiful, the lymphatic system's singing and how beautiful you put that good bacteria in, it just goes crazy. The good bacteria yeah. will just go crazy with that hydration when we are dehydrated, when we are stressed. When we eat the wrong food combination, yes. when we have, you know, when we have all kinds of things going on in our lives and we're not taking time for ourselves is when the microbiome, I mean, this is the beauty about it. Every three to four days, we get a new villi, microvilli enzyme. Every three to four days, look yeah. how perfect we're made. We have another chance. 
to redo it, okay? But enemas are so important. Way back to our grandparents, our great great grandparents, if the child was acting up, enema, if the child, and it wasn't for abuse. It was when a child's acting up or just being like, most of the time they don't feel good, but they can't express it, especially with autism, okay? They can't really, they express it differently, okay? Like my son was a headbanger. He would bang his head. So like when I look at colon hydrotherapy and it's just water, it's just water. It's warm, purified water. Why can't we do this at home? Mm -hmm. You know what a difference it would make? For the, for the parents, the mothers to learn how to do I have dads doing it, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I was telling Carmela that I have more men coming in here than I do women. Now, is that something? I Think about was that, not right? happy to hear that, actually, because I was thinking that more women and self-care, I mean, this is something that we women right. are so much more hormonal, more stressed. Well, maybe, <laughs> but that's my take on it. It definitely is something that more women should incorporate is colon therapy, colon hydration. And you were talking Absolutely. about EMFs, Arlene. That's another yes. way we, we dehydrate yeah. on a core level. Oh, people don't understand how that electromagnetic feels affecting us, okay? And remember guys, that microbiome, your garden in your body is who you are, okay? Now, this uh, I, another thing I want to bring up, when a woman's pregnant, Okay, that's the best time for that woman to start putting those culture. I mean, it's it's every time's a good time for culture food. Okay, but when you're pregnant, if you do not, have, I notice when women do culture foods and culture liquids while they're pregnant, their their labor times much shorter, much easier. The baby's happier, more content. You know, I have a lot of parents, they have a baby and they have a C-section. And I tell them, make sure that you tell your doctor you want that cloth inserted into your vagina. So when the baby's brought out by, by plastic, you know, the hands, the gloves, they bring that baby out. So that baby going into that canal and that baby getting that beautiful microbiome from the mom. So what you need to do is then you take that cloth out and you wipe that baby down so that the baby gets the culture, beautiful microbiome from the mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it, when it comes out, the baby, their, 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 their colon's open. It's waiting for that. And then when mm -hmm. you breastfeed, which is beautiful, beautiful milk, sugary milk, it's going to feed that microbiome. It's going to feed that bacteria mm -hmm. for the rest of its life. So listen, what we get, if you don't, if a child has problems, we always look at the mom, okay? Yeah. If the mom's yeah. in pretty good health, then we look at the dad, okay? Because they're made from both of us, right? Mm -hmm. But people, if they understand how important it, hormones are so important for the microbiome, there's so many things that, that are all like when people go to the doctor, like, oh, I got this pain or, oh, I got, you know, I, I get headaches all the time. The doctors don't ask, what are, you, what are you going to poo every day? Are you going a couple times a day? I've had many people tell me, my doctor says that 10, every 10 days, if I go poo, that's for me. I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is a problem with moms. We're caretakers, right? We got to take care of the family. One more thing to do. One more thing to do. We got to go, but one more thing to do. So we hold our yarn. We hold our poop. Why are we holding that? Do you hold your breath? Mm -hmm. When you want to, when the body wants to expel, that means it's getting rid of toxins, right? Yeah. So when you hold and you hold, and by the end of the night, you're like, oh, okay, the kids are in bed. I gotta go. And you can't go and you're pushing, you can't go. And the colon, you know what the colon's saying to you? Don't worry, I got it. I got that. I'm holding that for you. And we have to teach it. We have to retrain yeah. it to let go. A lot of people, when they get on the table, especially women, I gotta be like, let that go. Come on, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, poop cheerleader, let it go. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. The kids yeah. we get on the table. They let it go. We laugh and sing songs. They don't, they're not as trained yet. Okay. And when they're little, that's why I say start them when they're little. Because when they're little, it's hard when they're 13, 14 years old to say, come on, we're going to do some enemas. Yes. But when they're little, if they see mama doing and they see the bag and they see what it is, say, oh, they, they, a lot of times they're like, let me, let, I want to try. And, and that's great. And we cheer them on. Yeah, good job. Then they ask for it. They know when they don't feel yeah. good, they're going to say, I, I, you know, I have this little boy that used to say, I want massage, I want massage, which was really, he wanted an enema. 
Yeah. Well, well that there you go. It's like um, it starts with the mom, and and as soon as you had said that, you know, I know I had not been breastfed as a child, and I know that had led me into all my immunizational, immunological issues. Um, but that's another thing for mamas out there to definitely take the time to at least breastfeed for if you can up to one year. They say about th at least three months, but up to one year because it made all the yes. difference for my children. It basically, I did not pass down Personal. my microbiome to them. I made sure for three years that I breastfed it so that they would have a healthy microbiome. Yes, that is a hundred percent. You are on target. Mm -hmm. I, could, I had five surgeries after my son. I wore a bag, so they wanted me to pump the breast. I did it in the beginning, which was, thank God he had that, maybe three months I did it. But they want me to pump the breast milk because they were having on all kinds of stuff. Throw it out. Like, who's to say he was going to go back on it again? And my son really had, he was good. Mm -hmm. He was really good. He had no problems with any of that. But again, too, I have to be honest. When mamas aren't well, the child, the children are affected by it. They, all they want is their mamas to feel good, okay? And so do the husbands, too. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. I feel this way. If we take care of ourselves and love ourselves and make time for us, not only is it going to show, okay, because we're going to not only look good, because we're going to feel good, mm -hmm. we're going to glow, um, they're going to follow. They're going to follow because do you think my husband was on target with this? No. Mm -hmm. Now look at him, what he's doing. I mean, it's amazing what you can do when you're in a situation and you go through an experience in life, right? Mm -hmm. and women are so powerful but you know we were all meant to like how pretty do you look you know getting our nails done our toes done our hair done and all those things and really what we have to do is truly understand what are you feeding your body but it's not even emotionally what are, what are you taking in okay because believe it or not that colon's affected by your emotions. And there actually is a study out now that there is a study mm -hmm. that what goes on emotionally, there are a lot of people that are depressed, a lot of anxiety, overwhelmedness, all those things, they're finding out that it's their gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Maybe instead of going to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you should be more like, okay, what are you eating? Are you taking a probiotic? Are you taking enzymes? How much water are you drinking? You know, right. those things are really important or more like, when's the last time you had a clonic? Mm -hmm. Are you doing that of us? Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to talk about poo, even though we all like to talk about what we're eating. Right. And nobody wants to talk about pooing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's face it. Everything starts in the gut. Everything. We have to look at the whole body and let's face it. Most of, we are bacteria water, right? So what are we talking here? We're talking about our microbiome. We're talking about how is your microbiome? How is it? And that's going to tell you if you're going to get diseased. That's going to tell you if you're going to live a long life. That's going to tell you a lot of things. We are meant to live a long life, guys. Of course, we're not. People think, oh, 87. Wow. Look at you. Isn't that great? Well, you know what? We're meant to live over 100 years old. We really are. People think that's crazy. But it's not. Mm -hmm. I turned 60 this year and I was like, no more coloring my hair, no more highlights. <laughs> so that's coming out. I'm letting it go. Right. You know, people keep leaving on 60. And let me tell you, I work hard. I work a lot of hours. I love it though. It doesn't feel like work. The main thing is this I want to share that people can understand. Don't fear it. It's not going to hurt you. It, you know, just try it. Try it. Of course, I can help the women where to go in their area, because I'm sure people live in different areas. I can help them find a good colon therapist, you know? But of course, I can give them the questions they can ask their colon therapist too, because that's important. And I educate my people. If someone doesn't want to answer you, then something's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Because we are here to learn. And I think when people have knowledge, they feel more safe, mm -hmm. what it's about. So that whole myth that, oh, you're doing too many clients, it's not good, you know? Do you ever tell anybody you're drinking too much water or you're just bringing water the other way? No matter how much we drink here, I don't know if you're really absorbing it. And it's not so much what you eat, it's what you absorb now. Mm -hmm. And people aren't absorbing like they used to. We have to work on detoxing our body. Yes. We have to work on it. And for those who are cleansing, it's so important to have 
um, more hydration and bowel movements before they're even able to take in these superfoods. Because I have found that some people who were not getting the, the benefits that most were having, it was that they had impaction or they were, they were yeah. deep, they had deeper rooted gut health issues that could not push through. So yes. I do have to recommend to a number of my clients to, to get a colonic, to do enemas at home. Yeah. And then it changes everything because hydration you know what? is everything. You nailed it because a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, I did a liver cleanse. I feel like a piece of crap. I'm never doing that again. I'm like, well, first of all, are you moving your bowels? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? i like, or you do the liver cleanse. Are you moving your bowels? Mm -hmm. No. I'm like, where, yeah. where, where, where do you think those detoxes are going? They're going, they're recirculating in your body. Mm -hmm. So I say to people, move those bowels first. Work on moving those bowels. Do the enemas, do the clonics. Then you go do your cleanse, whether it's a liver cleanse or your, whatever you're doing, okay? The body is able to push it out. Now, mm -hmm. you have to watch even with cultured vegetables and cultured drinks. Yeah. People are like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm like, okay, that's great, but don't overdo it in the beginning. Because remember, that stuff, that good bacteria, is going to go after the bad bacteria. So what do you mm -hmm. think is going to happen? You're going to have this die off reaction where you're going to feel like you're going to burp. You're going to gas. You're going to be like, and mm. I tell people, okay, okay, step back. Even a good thing too much. But when they say about corn hydrotherapy, what are we talking about? Doing corn hydrotherapy every day? Have, have I ever did that? Yeah, I have done that. When I was in a situation, get my teeth done. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, and I felt great. It felt like a million bucks. So it wasn't the stress on my body of detoxing so much. You know what I mean? The water brought it out. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose any bacteria. I knew that. You know, I felt great. Um, have I over detox at times? Yeah, I think with the culture vegetables or, you know, the coconut water or whatever. Yeah, if you if you if you do a lot of it and you're you have to let everything in a pace and everybody's pace is different. Mm -hmm. Every pace is different. All right, day to day it changes, right? So Arlene, I would love to actually open up to the field if they have questions for you or about this topic of gut health. I think it's something that um, I'd love for our community to have a chance to voice themselves if they have any questions at all. Um, I think that's great. We have a good amount of time left, about eight minutes. So if Nayeva or Taz can assist me, um, if you do have a question, you just go into um, okay, I see Ashley has her hand raised. I can take you off mute. Now. Yay, Ashley! <laughs> <laughs> there you Hi. go. Hi, thank you so much. Um, this is just such an amazing call, and I really, really appreciate all of this information that you're sharing. Um, this is speaking to me so much, so thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to like what what's the best kind of water and would you suggest coffee enemas or just water or what would be the best route? Okay, so Carmeli knows that I have a special <laughs> water machine, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to get into that detail, okay, about it because I mean, I mean, it's single cell water. You can look it up. It's a, a single aligned cell water. What what does that mean? It's four hundred percent more liquefied, okay? So that would be great water to put in because I mean, it's just gonna go right in, okay? But if you don't have that, I also ozone my water. Why? I also have reverse osmosis. My water takes me about an hour to make because I'm all about water, okay? I'm not big on distilled water. I'm just not because if you read up on it, there's reasons why I'm not. But if you cannot get some beautiful, clean water, I prefer, now listen, there's a, uh, they have a machine called Zero Water, okay? And that stuff works because I test it, okay? So what it does is, I think Target has it. And not that I'm telling you to go to tar Target. There's other places too. It's called Zero Water. And it has a filter. It's gravity fed. You put your water from wherever you are, even in Philadelphia, because I tested it. They had their Philadelphia water in there and it came out zero. So think about that. So everything's taken out of that, okay? 
Then what I would do is heat that water up at least 104, 105, because by the time you get it into the Enna bag and bring that into you, it's gonna drop in temperature, okay? We want that warm water. FDA says no more than 104. Well, by the time you get your water heated up and, and you could put even a little bit of Epsom salt in there if you want, or real salt, or e a l salt. It's just minerals, guys, it's minerals. Here's a very cheap thing to do to, to make your body work better too with going poo. Do some enema salt baths, okay? Because it's magnesium, all right? Magnesium is so much needed for our bodies, way beyond what we, what we think, okay? So you take a beautiful bath to one cup of magnesium. I love borax, which is, you know, with the horses on the front. <laughs> borax is boron. is very much boron. needed for women. Very much needed, okay? Do like a half a cup of borax or a cup of borax. Do, uh, yeah, you could do baking soda, aluminum free, or you could do real salt, do a cup of that. But what's going to be nice about you soaking a nice hot bath and then when you try to stay as long as you can, if the water gets down in temperature, reheat it, put, put some more warm water. The longer you stay in, the better off you're going to be. When you get out of the bathtub and you drain it, take a white paper hey, towel and a white bathtub. Wait till you see what comes out, out of your body. Thank you, Arlene. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the ones open down, so that's even better. You know, we're going to take that in, okay? Okay. Okay, we have two more questions. I'd love to try to wrap that up too before we end our call. Um, thanks, Ashley. All right, how about on Jeanette? I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, I was having a question. You were talking about the autism and I pulled over on my car. Um, what about people with like the early stages of dementia? Is this the same idea? Um, as autism, that it works on the biome like that? It is so much like that. These girls are smart. So think about this. It's emotionally, mentally, neurologically. It's all this is affected by that, the gut, okay? Because the gut feeds the brain. So I will say most of my people in the beginning was uh, children on the spectrum, which is a very broad spectrum, PDD, autism, OCD, schizophrenia, bipolar. It's getting crazy, guys, because all it is is different labels, okay? It's just different, different areas of toxification, okay? So what's going on in one person's gut doesn't mean it's going on in this. And you could have two, two boys. You could have twins with different microbiome. Is that crazy or what, right? Wow. Even everybody in your home, is sharing the same microbiome. Do you understand? You, you don't have to have relationships with somebody, but you're in that home. So your children, your dog, your cat, your husband or lover, you're all sharing the same. You're exchanging microbiome, okay? A microbiome is so intelligent. It's so smart. They speak different languages, like one French, one German, mm -hmm. whatever, but they talk to each other. This is the thing. If something needs something or one sees something, then the other will grab it. So it's so important to understand. What was that? Um, I think I think you're complete. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Unless on Jeanette, do you is that clear? Were you able to? Yes, she is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. And what about, um, how do I pronounce her name? Mahalia. Mahalia Grace. I'll unmute you. Nice name. Hi. Oh, this is so amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm, an, I'm just newly uh, a new colon hydrotherapist. Um, and I've really felt called to uh, work with youth. And I just, I resonate so much for, with you. So I'm just wondering if I could reach out to you directly, maybe look at, if you have a training or, um, you know, how I can get more tips from that, because there are some, you know, fears that I'm facing around that, but I also feel really guided in that direction. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I just want to know if like you're okay with us reaching out or we can get your website info or if you have any current trainings about to come up or yeah. So listen to me, my, my table, my device is called Grace. 
I named it grace because you feel full of grace when you're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So listen, this is the thing. I'm extremely busy. Bless you that you're a colon therapist. We need so many more colon therapists. I'm trying to get my husband to make more tables and get back into that again. Cause literally with all the things with that was going on, I, you know, he aged like 20 years from it. So, but I think he's going to be coming back into it. I am an instructor, but listen, I've seen some great first foundation people. Are, are, are you with IAC? I'm, I'm not quite yet, but I'm tuned into them. So I'm definitely... Yeah, but I am over okay. here on the West Coast in Arizona, so. Okay, so listen, that doesn't even matter to me. Do you understand? Because there's different levels, of, you know, from foundation to advanced, you're all these different levels. And what, what I want to say to you is when you have a passion for it, you it makes it much better than a lot of the instructors that are out there, okay? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. if you To me, it doesn't even matter if you're not certified or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. When people want to learn, I have no problem as sharing with people, okay? But I'm going to be honest with you, as Carmela knows, I'm extremely busy. But you can always definitely reach out to me. Carmela can give you my phone number, and you can call me. Now, I don't answer all my 28, 30 calls till evening, okay? But when I answer the calls, I will get back to you. And whatever questions you have, I'm more than happy to assert you to, to get you where, assist you where you need to be. But the last thing you want to do is feel... Um, like, um, you know, a little bit nervous about something because people will pick that up like you can't imagine because they're nervous. You have to have so much comfort to overwhelm them with it, okay? Right. And once right. you get more comfortable with it, it's because the more knowledge we do, because I'm going to be honest with you, people, uh, we learn off of our clients always. I've been doing it over 20 years and I'm still learning. So it's amazing, it really is. But I'd be more than happy to assist you with any questions you have with colon hydrotherapy and, and congratulations to you. That's wonderful. You don't even realize how you're going to be affecting the world. Okay. This is amazing. I resonate with so much of you, what you're sharing. I share this with all my clients and I just, I just really appreciate you doing this work and sharing this. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm, thank you, Mahalia, for being a part of our community. Come back, please. Um, yes. We were right over the hour, but I have one last question and I kind of want to give you that floor um, because Arlene, it, your, your, it, your time is very valuable. Can Kathleen O'Brien be the last and then we'll wrap up? I'll just ask you to unmute. And Thank just you. Just a quick question because you did a um, marvelous job of informing us. I had no clue about what this therapy is and I would love to connect with a therapist in the area. And you mentioned that there's a way to do that. You can help us do that. I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So listen, I actually know some people from that area, colon therapist. But if you guys get a pencil and paper, are you ready? Um, this is a great one to find a colon therapist. Okay. We, we could put it in the chat as well, Arlene. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's www. Capital I, capital A capital C, capital T, dot O-R-G. So it's capital I, and then there's a minus sign. I'm sorry, like a minus sign. Oh. And then capital A-C-T, dot O-R-G. And that stands for International Association of Colon Hydrotherapy. When you go on their website, they're gonna be, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff up there, but go on to referral. You can put in your zip code, you can put in your city, you can put in your state. Of course, it gets really big if you put in your state. But some places, they don't have cold therapists, but maybe 75, 100 miles away. So that's where we, I want to bring in to Carmela about enemas, okay? I know they're a pain, but once you get used to it, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth. You're so used to it. You look forward okay. to it. Oh, the kids are <laughs> I'm going to do an enema, you know? Oh, Thank you. Um, can you You're just welcome. repeat that? It's it's slash. Oh, there it is. Hold on. It's, yeah, it's www. I, capital I, they're all capitals. I and then a minus sign. Uh, okay. Capital A, capital C, capital T, dot O-R-G. Okay. Perfect. And that stands for International Association of Colon Hydrotherapy. There's other, there's other associations, 
That's who I'm under though. But there's other ones that are just strictly closed system too. This is both open and closed systems. Well, I'm glad I just my, my thing is I don't want anyone to go somewhere where they experience something that they should have never experienced. Because this is a very um it's not really different because our great great ancestors did it all the time. I mean, the Egyptians they used to hang upside down and all kinds of things. They actually saw a bird, a bird saw like they saw a bird with a long beak take water and put it into the zebra's butt, and then the zebra went to the bathroom. See, the animals know what each other need. We're no different than that, okay? Now, that sounds gross, but then they actually start collecting those beats, the, the, the beats of the bird, and we're doing, like, animals and stuff, know. you know? But believe me, the most, it shouldn't be just for the very wealthy. You think those people from Hollywood aren't doing clonics before they get in their beautiful gowns and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it should just be for um, the, the people that are, you know, know about it. And I, I'll tell you, compared to where it was, the medical is coming around big time. Because I have a lot of doctors that come in here, a lot. But not all of them share with their, with their, with their patients, which blows me away, you know. But the main thing is this. It's very safe, very, very, very comfortable. And you should be in the atmosphere that you can ask anything and feel comfortable with it, okay? And that's who you want to be with. You want to be with somebody that truly loves it and truly wants to guide you and educate you when there's an issue. It is all about the gut, guys. It really is. And when we look at that, things will clear up. And we, the body heals. The body heals. But we can't be dehydrated and heal. That, that ain't going to happen. Well, thank you. We're just at time, Arlene. Thank you so much for even going a little bit over and for your time here for our community, Million Mom. Um, I will see you again next week. <laughs> and um, yes. Sarah, if you'd like to um, share with us what's happening here with our community next week. Thanks, Arlene. Bye-bye okay. for now. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much, Arlene. That was wonderful. I learned so much today, as I'm sure our whole count everybody here in the council and the million mom movement learned um i'm so grateful for you and thank you all for taking time out of your day and joining us today and join us again next friday i don't have um what our next presentation is do you have it up carmela uh, i believe the next one is business focused since we've been alternating health and business um but i don't have right in front of me who's going to be presenting yeah, but it will be great and we're excited to have you back <laughs> so please mark your calendars come back next week invite your friends and family and team members and i will be getting those um squares up i usually try to get them up between monday and fr wednesday um if i can i'll get them up by monday so that you guys all know what to promote for friday thank you all for joining us we'll see you again soon <laughs>